just me and the old man watching match of the day, watching the highlights. It gets to the kind of shite games. And I say, right, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna go to bed, Dad. Good night. <laughs> and he would continue the charade, and he'd say, are you off to bed, son? Good night. <laughs> and there was that mutual father and son, we both know what the plan is here. I would, <laughs> I would casually exit the living room nice and slowly, good night, <laughs> hit the hallway and race up the stairs. Don't even consider looking in the fridge, eyes on the prize. <laughs> Upstairs, bedroom TV switched on, go to number six. That's when you see what he's watching, TVs are synchronized. Six, we're in, he's in control. <laughs> A few minutes go by and he's still watching match of the day. That's fine. Well, he must be given it a few minutes. Oh. <laughs> Don't I make it too obvious? Yes. He's done this before. Uh. <laughs> Five minutes go by. He's still watching match of the day. I'm thinking, come on, stick to the plan, Andy. <laughs> I'm looking at the bottom left of the screen, waiting for the numbers to get typed in. The numbers that could make or break the evening's entertainment. <laughs> Come on, give me your numbers, Andy. Come on. Nine. That's a good start. Nine. <laughs> could not have hoped for a better start than a nine now. <laughs> Zero five, the ten minute free view. You're a dirty bastard, Dad, but I love you. <laughs> so, we've got some celebrities in, as always. Live at the Apollo, who have we got? Who have we got? We've got the EastEnders cast. How are we doing, EastEnders? They're sitting right at the back. I don't mean the extras, I mean the real people. <laughs> We try to get Phil Mitchell. No, where is he? Is he up at, he's up at King's Cross, dressed up as a, a lady boy, trying to raise enough money to buy a pot noodle, aren't he? <laughs> There's a record amount of complaints about the Phil Mitchell crack addict thing. Is that right? A record amount of complaints? You don't know. I'm speaking to Ian Bale. I'm a bit starstruck. <laughs> no, I feel sorry at the major, the major addictions. I feel sorry for gambling addicts. They're the people I really feel sorry for. Because at least if you're a drug addict, or an alcoholic, or a sex addict. At least you've got some good stories. <laughs> no, a Gambler's Anonymous meeting, how boring would that be? Ah, oh, I remember I put 20 quid on a greyhound. And, <laughs> and it finished last, right now. Whereas a sex addiction meeting, I'd imagine that to be awesome. Got to the stage, I was spending my wages on, on strap ons and, <laughs> and gimp masks and, and WD 40. <laughs> uh, Sarah Beanie, where's Sarah Beanie? She's in the house. Sarah Beanie, how you doing, Sarah? At uh, what stage of pregnancy are you at, Sarah? Are you? <laughs> Sarah Beanie is always pregnant, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, what's your, what's your new show called? It's called. Help, my house is falling down. So that, that's the kind of title of a show that would get me to watch it. And I like seeing distress and carnage. You, know, you don't want like to watch MTV Cribs, watching some R&B star showing you his golden snooker table and stuff. I want like to, like to see MTV shitholes. That's what I like. <laughs> well, some guy <laughs> opening the door, keeping the chain on, peeking round. A can of cider. I uh, come in. Uh, this is my, my toaster. Yeah. <laughs> this is where the sink used to be. <laughs> Sarah's got kids. I'm at that age. I'm at that age that some of my cousins and friends are having children. No, that way you're in a family gathering and there's a newborn baby getting passed around the room like a joint. No, that way you're everybody. <laughs> Sarah, 
<laughs> and everybody's saying their piece. No, some people who have just got this natural rapport when they speak to kids, they can just go, oh, look at you. Oh, it's this chicken. Are you chicken face? Are you chicken face? Oh, are you telling me a little story? Oh. <laughs> it's getting closer and closer to me, and I'm thinking, wow, I need to pretend I give a shit. The baby reaches me, and I just sort of freeze up. I'm going, oh, how are you doing, mate? <laughs> and the baby feels the tension, starts to cry. Everybody looks at me as if I'm in the wrong here. No, toughen up, you wee prick. <laughs> We're in the middle of an obesity epidemic. Have we got any, any fat people in the audience? Because people have got flawed perceptions of their actual size. I'll use women as an example here. You know, you get skinny girls, they think they're chubby. Chubby girls think they're fat. Fat girls think they're obese. And then obese girls think they're supermodels. <laughs> they're the happy people. They're the ones hanging out of limousine windows on a Friday night going, ah! And the drivers are going, can you lean in, please? You're going to tip this thing. <laughs> I know it's Christine's hen night, but I don't have a tax disc. Get in. <laughs> We've got Olympic medalist swimmer, Sharon Davis. Let's hear the show. <laughs> that's enough, that's enough. It was, only, it was only a silver, that's enough. You well went by the silver. <laughs> I took up swimming. I tried to go swimming. I went to my local public pool. Not a private fancy gym, a local pool. A council pool where anybody can go. And by that, they mean anybody can go. <laughs> I was there. Public pool. I'd, I'd done, done my length. <laughs> and I stopped. But I made it look cool. Not that way you put your elbows up on the tiles. <laughs> Can't wait to go and grab a smoothie. Now, if you've got a bit of a waste, you do need to shop in cheap clove shops. Not if you walk in somewhere trendy, like somewhere like River Island or Top Shop, you know, somewhere like that, and some boy band freak show comes bouncing across to serve. You know, the people who work in these places, they don't, they don't walk, they bounce. Hey, man, yeah. All <laughs> well, that energy and enthusiasm that oozes from people who have never been punched in the face. And you ask this guy, I had to ask his assistant, I said, excuse me, mate, can I try on these jeans and a 36-inch waist? And the guy's enthusiasm just drained. <laughs> and he looked at me. You know that way you would look at somebody if they just took a shite in your kettle? Primark, Primark, they've started selling Che Guevara t-shirts. That's a fitting testament to the man's legacy, isn't it? Che Guevara. <laughs> che Guevara fought for the poor and oppressed in South America. Now his face has been stitched onto t-shirts by the poor and oppressed in South East Asia. <laughs> to be worn by the poor and oppressed in South East London. <laughs> As for, I, as for I stay when I come to London, South East London, kind of Dulwich sort of area, there's a lot, a lot of knife crime, a lot, a lot of crime. I, 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 don't, I don't really know the solutions to that particular problem, but I think a start would be to maybe close, close the shops that sell the weapons in the first place. You, know, you get these high street shops that sell crossbows to guys in shell suits. Not these places. <laughs> shops that sell thousands of baseball bats every year, but have never sold any baseballs. <laughs> Oh, well, the Peckham Rye. Red Sox have not had a game in a while. <laughs> As in one of these places, done a bit of research, and the only security measure, if you want to buy a violent weapon, is you need to fill in a form, leaving your name and address, so if anything happens, you can be traced for questioning. Now, that's the theory. But what self-respecting nutcase? <laughs> Buying a weapon would leave their real name and address. <laughs> well, I picture some police investigation team going through the book and saying, excuse me, 
excuse me, shop owner, says here, you sold a samurai sword to Bert and Ernie. <laughs> from 24 Sesame Street. <laughs> and some new guy cop, he'd get sent on a wild goose chase somewhere. Sesame Street not showing up on the sat-nav. <laughs> Putting down the window for directions. Going, excuse me, mate, excuse me. Can you tell me? <laughs> how to get... <laughs> how to get to Sesame, that's a wind-up, isn't it? Give me a quid or you're getting stabbed. <laughs> Just you.